Hello friends, let's discuss current affairs and today's first questions about the new Amir of Kuwait because the questions focus is on the you know the death of the previous guy. Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah is full name was Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Zabar Al Sabah, who passed away recently, was the Amir of uh, you know Kuwait. The new guy is uh, Sheikh Mishal M E. S H A L or M I S H A L Mishal Al Ahmad Al Sabah. The new guy is Mish. You could simply write Sheikh Misal Al Sabah is a new king or Amir of Kuwait. Kuwait is a tiny country in the, um, the Arabian Peninsula. At, uh, this is where it adjoins uh, Iraq, uh, and uh, you would find that uh, Kuwait was the target of Iraq in 1990. In 1990, Kuwait was attacked and incorporated as the 19th province of Iraq. Okay, so Saddam Hussein attacked uh, Iraq, uh, attacked um, you know uh, Kuwait and uh, incorporated that into his country Iraq. You know, uh, then the 14 country coalition led by the U.S. came into picture and then uh, you know it defeated the Iraqi. military forces within a short span of time and liberated kuwait now as far as the choices are concerned uh, you look at jordan jordan is a pro west monarchy uh, it's a constitutional monarchy so there is a prime minister but we are more interested in the the monarch whose name is king abdullah the second abdullah the second So when you write, you write Abdullah Roman numeral two. But when you read the name, it's Abdullah the second. Okay, Abdullah the second. Qatar has been in use for all the right and wrong reasons. Uh, wrong reasons in the sense that it's played the hostage broker. You know, um, it's home to the leadership of Hamas. It's also sentenced. Eight Indian Navy men, former Navy men, to death for on espionage, spying charges. So Qatar, there, uh, whose capital is Doha, and whose king is a guy called Tamim Al Thani. Tamim, T A M I M. Tamim Al Thani, A L L hyphen Thani, T H A N I. The ruling house's name is Thani. In this case, let's say Kuwait, it's Al Sabah. Al Sabah. And in the case of uh, Qatar, it's Al Thani, T H A N I. Saudi Arabia is, um, you know, run by King Salman, King Salman Abdul Aziz Al Saud, but let's call him King Salman. Syria is a president has a presidential system, and its king, it's sorry, its mana president is a guy named. Um, Bashar Al Assad, Bashar B A S H A R, Bashar Al A L Al Assad, A S S A D Assad, Bashar Al Assad. Bashar Al Assad is a Shia Muslim, and uh, this is in a country that is predominantly Sunni. Seventy-four percent of Syrian population is Sunni. Okay, so I guess that's uh, that's about it. Which country plans to build a massive international city named Gelfu? Gelfu is a region's name. Mindfulness city in an area cover over thousand square kilometers on its border with Assam. This is Assam and this is Bhutan. Bhutan has um, two countries uh, as uh, you know um, on its um, uh, international borders. On the north side is uh, China. This is all China. And on its east uh, and south, as well as west, uh, west, south, and east, uh, you know, Bhutan has India. Bhutan's capital is Thimphu. T H I M P U. I'll repeat T H I M P U. Thimphu. Uh, its king is Jigme Kesar Nangyal Wangchuk. Let's call him Jigme Wangchuk. J I G M E J I G M E Jigme Wangchuk W A N G C H U K. Okay. This country has come up with this uh, mindfulness city, which will be as uh, which which will be an N S A R special administrative region. The basic idea is to promote economic development, but 
more than economic, pure economic development, it's going to be the focus is, is, is going to be on economic and sustainable development. Okay, economic and sustainable development. What about the choices? And just before that, what's the capital of Bhutan? Bhutan's um, cap, uh, capital is Thimpu, T H I M P U, Thimpu. And uh, uh, you know, the currency is Gultrum, N G U L T R U M. I repeat, N G U L T R U M, Gultrum. Nepal's capital is Kathmandu, K A T H M A N D U, Kathmandu, which is also the home of head office of SARC. Okay. Uh, Nepal's capital is Kathmandu. The Prime Minister is Pushpa Kamal Dahal. Pushpa, Pushpa Kamal Dahal. D A H L. Pushpa Kamal Dahal. And the currency is Nepali rupee. Nepal is home to eight of the ten tallest mountains in the world, including the tallest, which is Mount Everest. Uh, let's look at the second one there, Laos. It's a country in East Asia. Uh, you have India right there. Yeah. Uh, on its India's immediate east is Myanmar. Next is Thailand. From there, Cambodia and above, you know, uh, uh, Cambodia and east of Thailand is Laos. Laos has capital is uh, Vian Tien or Vian Xien. Vian Tien is spelt like V I E N. I repeat, V I E N T I A N E. V I E N T I A N E. Vian Tien. Vian Tien. And uh, the. It's a single party communist country, single party socialist communist country. Uh, it's a dictatorship and the guy who runs the communist party is also the head of the communist party and um, the guy who heads the communist party is also the head of the country okay the guy's name is Tonglun Sisulit I'll spell T-H-O-U-N-G I repeat T-O-N sorry T-H-O-U-N-G L-O-U-N Tonglun Sisulit S I. S O U L I T H. Tonglun Sisulit. S I S O U L I T H. Tonglun Sisulit. And the currency of uh, Laos is, if I'm not wrong, KIP. K I P. Myanmar, uh, immediate east of India, uh, is its location. And the capital is Naipida. N A Y. P Y I D A W. I repeat N A I P Y I D A W. Nai P D A W. Nai P D A W. And the leader who is the leader of the Myanmar's military, uh, Myanmar's army is Min M I N Min Liang. I'll spell H L A I N G. H L A I N G. There's a long name, Min Liang Ong. Let's stick to simple terms. Min, M I N, Min Liang, H L A I N G. Chai, okay, Myanmar's currency is Kyat, K Y A T, Kyat, K Y A T, Kyat. And um, uh, China's capital is Beijing, we all know this. The Prime Minister, we know the name of the President. The Prime Minister is Li Qiang. L I Li Qiang. Q I A N G. I'll spell Q I A N G. Qiang. And the currency is Ren Min B. R E N M I N B I. R E N M I N B I. Let's go from here. Name the Air Force exercise in which India's Akash Air Defense Missile System destroyed four targets simultaneously. Akash is a surface to air missile, SAM it's called. It's launched from the surface to hit a target in the air. Like Prithvi is surface to surface missile, Akash is surface uh, to air, and this one is air defense missile system. So it's an interceptor kind of thing. So what happened recently was, you know, four missiles were launched and Akash air defense launched a single you know unit 
and at the same time you know it actually it broke it split and it engaged four different missiles intercepted them destroyed them all at once all at once india is the first country in, you know in the world to do this amazing thing so it's a single firing unit simultaneous simu which simultaneously engaged and destroyed four incoming unmanned targets so this is the first ever time it has been done in the world and india is that country okay so i guess that's a bit about it which ministry launched india's first ever winter expedition to arctic with the aim to unravel polar mysteries the ministry of earth sciences headed by kiran rijiju kiran k i r e n i repeat k i r e n kiran rijiju r i j i g u sorry j i j u r i j i j u kiran rijiju hmm so he is a minister of uh, you know uh, earth sciences and i want you to know that um, india is setting up a military expedition india has set up a, um, a research center an arctic research center you could write it down india's first arctic research center is named himadri h i m a d r i himadri research station india's first arctic research station is named himadri research station located in svalbard i'll spell s v a l b a r d s v a l b a r d svalbard comma norway see right of norway there is a group of islands called svalbard on that india has set up a set up the himadri research station okay and this research station will be taken will be run by ncpor have you heard of this ncpor is national center for polar and ocean research let me spell for you spell it for you let me give you the full form rather national center for polar and ocean research ncpor so that's about it so we mentioned that india is launched its first arctic expedition and we mentioned that india is first arctic research station is has come up in you know in svalbard norway and this research station is named himadri and uh, the minister of world sciences is headed by kiran rijiju okay and you know arctic is said to come from the word greek word arctos arctos means bhalu and over the north pole you have two major constellations which are like constellation bhasha astronomical in that language ursa major ursa minor okay okay keep that out arctos the greek word arctos means bhalu and over that area you find the great bear constellation great bear constellation and hence arcto from arctos came arctic opposite of arctic is antarctic because it is anti arctic antarctic is anti arctic and hence it's called antarctic okay so arctic from the greek word arctos which means bhalu and you know the opposite of arctic is antarctic because it's anti arctic cool what about the ministries here the ministry of earth sciences Mm. the ministry of earth sciences we mentioned is you know headed by kiran rijiju minister of defense by rajnath singh minister of environment and forest is headed by bhupendra yadav bhupendra yadav bhupendra yadav and bhupendra yadav heads another ministry another ministry named labor and ministry, labor and employment labor and employment labor and employment so two ministries bhupendra yadav heads the ministry of environment and it's actually called environment forest and climate change that's the full name of the ministry let me repeat ministry of environment forest and climate change okay the second ministry bhupendra yadav heads is 
Ministry of Labour and Employment. Coming to Ministry of Information Broadcasting is headed by Ashwini Vaishnav. Ashwini Vaishnav heads the Info Ministry of Information Broadcasting. Uh, he, no, no, he, it's, you know, I'm so sorry. Minist Ministry of Information Broadcasting is headed by Anurag Thakur. Anurag Thakur, I'm so sorry, my friends. Anurag Thakur, who also heads the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. Youth Affairs and Sports. What about the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy? Uh, Raj Kumar Singh. Raj Kumar Singh. Yeah, Raj Kumar Singh. Raj Kumar Singh heads another ministry, Ministry of Power. So, Ministry of Power and Ministry of New and en Renewable Energy are both headed by Raj Kumar Singh. Okay. But we so intense seismic. Seismic is um, tremor activity or earthquake activity. A volcano erupted on the Reykjans Peninsula in southwest Iceland. So actually, um, a volcano here is more like a crater. We should name it crater because the crater chain. There is a chain of craters. Okay, uh, called Sund Nukur. S U N D H N U K U R. Sund Nukur crater chain it erupted it erupted and lava you know flowed from from these craters to all around almost for 20 25 kilometers how big is iceland you know iceland is a volcanic island it's probably the only country in the world that is still growing and why would that be because iceland has a lot of volcanoes around its coast coastline so when a volcano erupts, the lava flows into the sea and along the sea, it solidifies and creates rock. You understand this? So Greenland is, sorry, Iceland is expanding. Though it, you know, by minuscule number, minuscule number, but still it's expanding. Iceland's capital is Reykjavik. Let me, R-E-Y-K-A, R-E-Y, K J A V I K. I'll spell R E Y K J A Y A Y. Sorry, J A V I K. I'm so sorry. A bit confusing actually. R E Y K J A V I K. That's Reykjavik. The J, J being silent. Okay. Iceland's capital is Reykjavik, and its prime minister is. Um, Katrin Jacobs Dottir. Katrin K A T R I N. I repeat K A T R I N. Katrin Jacobs Dottir. J A K O B S D O T T I R. Jacobs Dottir. And you know what? It's a lakh square kilometer big island. 1 lakh, 1.03 lakh square kilometers. The population is about 3.6 lakh square kilometers. 3 lakh, 3.6 lack that's it but because it's a very difficult place to live most of the population is centered around the southern part of the you know the island of iceland okay ireland uh, the capital is uh, dublin d u b l i n dublin and the prime minister they don't call him the prime minister they have a different name for the office they call the, uh, we call the position I Prime Minister, they call Tango Siege. Don't worry too much about it. Okay. Ireland's Prime Minister is Leo Varadkar. Leo, L E O, Leo Varadkar. V A R A D K A R. Varadkar of Indian origin. Yes. Leo Varadkar. Leo Varadkar. Uh, Finland, the capital is Helsinki, H E L S I N K I, Helsinki, and the Prime Minister is Petteri Orpo, P E T T E R I, Petteri Orpo, O R P O, Orpo. Japan and Indonesia are old world, we've been discussing them for some age now. 
Against which cricket team did the Indian women's cricket team register its biggest 347 run victory uh, in the one off match that was held in Mumbai, England? India scored, I think, 428 in the first innings and about 186 for a six declared in the second. The English cricket team went out for just 136 in the first innings and 131 in the second innings. So it was a massive defeat for the English cricket, women's cricket team and a great victory for the Indian women's cricket team. Not much to discuss here. Hmm? Identify the correct statements about the sewer diamond boors. Boors is a Dutch word which means stock exchange. Normal basha means place for exchange. So you could simply say boors means stock exchange. Okay, or exchange. Boors means exchange. So I, I, everything, each of these choices is right. So I'm not going to spend time on this, my friends. Okay, the building looks magnificent. So not just one building, it's a series of buildings. They all look magnificent. Which state will host the Kelo India Youth Games in January 2024? Tamil Nadu. The Kelo India Youth Games uh, will be held in Tamil Nadu and there will be one demo sport. You could write the name of the demo sport. Silamban. S-I-L-A-M-B-A-M. -A -A I repeat. S-I-L-A-M-B-A-M. -A -A Silamban. It's a kind of martial art. Local, I think. Local martial art. Demo sport. Demo sport um, means it won't be a competitive field, it will just be a demo sport. In Tamil Nadu, Kelo India Youth Games will be held in four places Chennai, Coimbatore, Madurai, and Trichy. Trichy is Tiruchirappalli. Okay. And what's the mascot of Kelo India Youth Games Tamil Nadu? It's Veera Mangai. Veera Mangai. V E E R A M A N G A I. I spell. I'll spell again. V E E R A M A N G A I. Veera Mangai. Veera Mangai. This uh, Veera Mangai is was a title given to the great uh, Velu Nachiar. I may have got the pronunciation incorrect. The intention is right. Okay. Uh, Veera Mangai Velu Nachiar was the first queen to rebel against the British. Yeah, she was a brave woman and she fought against the British and it was uh, her bravery that got her the title, that earned her the title Veera Mangai, which means brave woman. Okay. Which global institution in its annual Article 14 consult, um, Article 4 consultation report called India star performer? Contributing more than 16th, that is one sixth or 16 percent of global growth. The IMF. India has been growing fantastically. If you look at the first six months of this financial year, you know India grew at um, India grew at 7.6 uh, percent. The first quarter, April to June, we grew at 7.6 percent. The next quarter, uh, July to September, also we grew at 7.6 percent. So the target was 7% but we grew at 7.6% in the first 6 months of the current financial year. So the annual target has now been upped to 7%. It was about 6.8%, now it's likely to be around 7%. Okay. And uh, who is the Chief Economist of the International Monetary Fund. Let's write the Chief Economist of two organizations. International Monetary Fund, Chief Economist, Paul, P-I-U-L, Paul, Paul, Olivier, O-L-I-V-I-E-R, Paul, Olivier, Gaurinchas, G-O-U-R-I-N-C-H-A-S, I repeat, G-O-U-R-I-N-C-H-A-S. Paul Olivier Gorinchas. Hmm. Paul Olivier Gorinchas. He's a French guy. World Bank, Chief Economist. Indermit Gill. Indermit. I N D E R M I T. Indermit Gill. G I L L. Indian. American. Indian actually. 
The International Hockey Federation Hockey Star Awards were announced recently. That identify the correct statements from those given below. Uh, all of them are correct, but uh, we could write a couple of more. Like um, Player of the Year, men and women is are given both given. One Indian, um, you know, the Indian Hardik Singh received um, won the Player of the Year award, while the Dutch uh, superstar Zandi Ward was the women's winner, women's category winner. Goalkeeper of the Year award went to Savita of India. There is no other name. Savita is the only name that's given in all the, you know, uh, in fact, on the Indian Hockey Federation website also. So, goal cup keeper of the year, men, you could write, men, men. Pirman Block, P-I-R-M-I-N, P-I-R-M-I-N, Pirmin or Pirman Block, B-L-A-A-K, B-L-A-A-K, Pirmin Block of Netherlands, of Netherlands. So both goalkeepers as well as men's and uh, men's player, best player, men's women's best player, both went to only two countries, Netherlands and India. Um, you know this, our goalkeeper, our nation's goalkeeper, um, the women's hockey team's goalkeeper Savita had won this tournament, you know, this particular title in 2021. 2022 and this year also so for three consecutive years she has won this particular award think about it man she must she's a real superstar hmm? name the multinational force operation recently launched by the u.s to protect shipping in the red sea see this is the red sea the red sea is what is called an inlet i-n-l-e-t inlet of the indian ocean this is the indian ocean so water from here goes into this. So this is what is called an inlet, a narrow stream of water basically, narrow channel. How narrow? Not so very narrow. At its maximum width, which is here basically, at this point, okay. This is 355, no, I think here. Yeah, only here, this point. 355 kilometers. Can you believe that? The widest the Red Sea is at 355 kilometers. Lengthwise, it's about 20 to 50 kilometers. So lengthwise 2250 kilometers, width maximum width is you know uh, 355 kilometers. Okay, now the total area of the Red Sea is about 4.38 lakh square kilometers. 4.38 lakh square kilometers. It is where the Indian Ocean water streams into that particular gap called the Red Sea. Okay. And it connects, it, it takes the Red Sea, Suez Canal route. The Red Sea, Suez Canal joins the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. So the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea are connected by the Suez Canal, which is 193 kilometer long. 193 kilometers long. So of late, there have been, you know, for decades now, almost for 20 years, there have been a great deal of piracy and attacks on commercial ships in this region and most of these attacks are perpetrated done by you know are uh, you know undertaken by the somali pirates this is somalia this is somalia you see this you know this is highlighted somalia till here so a lot of sp because uh, there is a great deal of poverty here but the, this is one of the poorest countries in the world with a very low rate of, uh, you know, there is hardly any economic growth. And um, this is a very large country, which is quite arid, dry. Uh, how large is this country? It's, I think it's about 6.37 lakh square kilometers. So India's top two city states, Rajasthan 3.42, and then Madhya Pradesh 3.08 square kilometers. You know, if we make together, you know, together, Rajasthan plus Madhya Pradesh will make Somalia slightly smaller than this, but that's okay. Yeah, gives you an idea actually. So a lot of people here in Somalia, you know, are desperately poor. More than 70% of the country is desperately poor. There is an ongoing civil war happening there and there is jilch next to nothing economic growth. And um, it is also 
it has the longest coastline longest coastline in african mainland this is african mainland not the islands okay it is its coastline is about double three double three square uh, sorry double three double three kilometers three thousand three hundred thirty three kilometers length you know coastline is there which is the longest in um, in mainland africa now these pirates have been attacking ships for a long time so you know india the united states and some other countries have come together to form a multinational firm uh, you know a force for a long time it's been in play but of late these guys have moved away these forces have been have moved away though india is still patrolling this and recently they attacked one indian ship who attacked more than the pirates the pirates did attack one indian ship but more than that um the rebels in houthi uh, sorry the rebel houthi group you know houthi is houthi it's also called houthi h o u t h i houthi or houthi is a terrorist group active in yemen it's backed by shia iran because these rebels are also you know shia now they have taken over the country large parts of the yemen large parts of the yemeni republic are under the control of the houthi rebels saudi arabia doesn't like this they are a sunni majority country and they do not want shias anywhere close to them so they for two years bombarded this country they killed nearly 4 lakh yemeni people so what you have to understand here is that uh, these houthis with the help of iran have been attacking the ships you know that are going through this red sea um some of these ships they say are either owned by jews or belong to israel so we are attacking them so iran is waging an indirect war against israel through hamas and hezbollah similarly now they have brought in the houthis also to attack the commercial interest of israel in the red sea okay so the americans have launched this prosperity garden guardian to ensure that the houthis don't attack ships commercial ships that belong to either the jewish community or israel themselves is israel itself okay see a lot of things goes through this energy oil gas okay trade defense equipment then this is where the international internet cables go also you understand a lot of things go here so this the, the protecting this particular sea lanes is very important very important for the international community abdul fateh al sisi he has become the president of egypt again this is egypt this is egypt is abdul fateh al sisi has won the you know uh, presidential election again he is a dictator he was earlier the ruler the, the the general of the egyptian army but the, um, after the egyptian revolution which is also called the facebook revolution he took power and he has ever since consolidated the country run the country with a tight grip south sudan this is is there a map here in south yeah south sudan see this is sudan oh boy so sudan south sudan south sudan is run by salwa kir mayardit i'll spell sal salwa s a l v a salwa mayardit m a y a r d i t salwa mayardit um what are the choices somalia you could write somalia also um hasan sheik mohammed Hassan Sheikh Mohammed Sudan you see this name here you could write this Abdul Fata Al Burhan Abdul Fata Al Burhan Al Burhan B U R H A N Turkey president is Recep R E C E P Recep Erdogan E R D O G A N The fourth unit of the Kakrapara atomic power plant has been um, launched in uh, Gujarat has been launched in Gujarat 
India has 22 nuclear reactors across eight plants. 22 reactors across eight plants, and uh, we have a total installed capacity of about 7,380. Let's make it 7,500 megawatts. Okay. So plenty of uh, nuclear reactors in India. See, it's very easy to write. Rajasthan has Rawat Bhata. There is a nuclear plant called Rawat uh, Bhata. You know, in Maharashtra there is Jaitapur, J A I T A P U R, Jaitapur, which is under construction. Okay. According to a recent report from Soik Finance, they range the top states in the in terms of their contribution to India's GDP in descending order. India produces a total gross domestic product GDP of 3.73 trillion dollars or 3730 billion dollars of which the highest comes from Maharashtra 15.7% of India's GDP comes from Maharashtra so you could write Maharashtra 15.7 in the order in which these are all the descending order so i am not going to give you the shares because pretty little separates Uttar Pradesh from um, what is that place? Tamil Nadu. Uttar Pradesh contributes 9.2 percent, and Tamil Nadu contributes 9.1 percent. So don't worry too much about the percentages. Highest yes is Maharashtra, 15.7. Haryana won the 2023 Vijay Hajare Trophy, defeating so and so. Okay. Vijay Hajare Trophy is an ODI domestic tournament. You could write this domestic ODI tournament, domestic ODI one day international tournament associated with cricket. And who was this Vijay Hajare? Vijay Hajare was the captain of the Indian Test cricket team in 1950s, early 50s. He holds the record for leading India to its first Test win. Yes, the first. Test win for India came against England at you know Madras, I think, uh, in 1951-52. 1951-52. Yeah, 51-52, Madras against England. So that's something, my friends. Okay. Mm. This year's winner was Raj uh, Haryana, and the the the. the Runner-up was Rajasthan, and the best player of the tournament was Sumit Kumar. You could write this: Sumit Kumar of Haryana. Sumit Kumar of Haryana, best player. That is player of the series. Which laboratory launched the world's deepest and largest underground laboratory named DURF, which is deep underground and ultra low radiation background facility for frontier ex physics experiments. The Chinese have launched this. This is 2.5 kilometers below the Earth, 2.5 kilometers inside. Okay. Now, why did they do this? Because uh, scientists say that this kind of piece, its location, gives them enough space, you know, to study dark matter. So, study dark matter, and dark matter is an unknown force. No one knows what it looks like. I'm not kidding, but it contributes. It it, it comprises 27% of the universe. 27% of the universe is dark matter. Okay. 68% uh, is dark energy. Yes. 68% is dark energy. 27% is dark matter. And 5% is what we see. Observable universe. Ordinary matter. It's ordinary matter which interact with gravity, mass, electromagnetic field and everything. Okay. Along with the European Union, which grouping will implement a direct ban on diamonds exported from Russia, the G7, the G7 has been doing this for a long time. Uh, these kinds of embargo, sanctions against Russia, most of which haven't worked. Okay. Uh, G7 comprises seven countries, of course, the group of seven comprises seven countries in order of where they are located, so geographical order, US 1, US 2, Canada 3, UK, United Kingdom 4, uh, France 5, Italy 6, 
Germany, seven Japan. So to repeat, US, Canada, UK, France, Italy, Germany, and Japan. Those are the seven countries. The G4 Mercosur we recently we learned recently. So we'll focus only one more G4. G4 is a group of four nations which want to become permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Okay, with or without vote, veto. So permanent members. What are these four? Brazil, India, South Africa, and Japan. No, oh, sorry, India, Brazil, Germany, India, and Japan. These four countries. Okay. The Ministry of Railways directed the National Academy of Indian Railways to hand over all of its assets to India's first university in the tr transportation and logistics sectors named Gati Shakti Vishwa Vidyale in Vadodara, Gujarat. Yeah, I think there's hardly anything to discuss. But the railway ministry is headed by Ashwani Vaishnav. Ashwani Vaishnav. Ashwani Vaishnav also heads the Ministry of Communications. And the Ministry of Electronics and Info uh, Electronics and um, Information Technology. So Ashwini Vaishnav heads three ministries: Railway Ministry, okay, Rail Ministry, Communications Ministry, and what is the third one? Um, Electronics and Information Technology. Which paramilitary force has been deployed by the central government for the security of the Parliament complex out of the December 13th security breach this year? CISF, you know, CISF guards all public sector enterprises, all mines, all space installations, defense units, defense manufacturing units, uh, DRDO labs, airports, seaports. Okay, so practically anything of important, critical importance is guarded by, you know, what is it, uh, the CISF, which is headed by the interim director general now. Her name is Nina Singh. Nina Singh, Interim Director General. Nina Singh. What about Shashastra Seema Bal? You could write. The Director General's name is Rashmi Shukla. Rashmi Shukla. IPS, Rashmi Shukla. CRPF, Anish Dayal Singh. Anish Dayal Singh, IPS. National Security Guard, MA Ganapati, IPS. M.A. Ganapati, Border Security Force, Border Security Force, Nitin Agarwal, IPS, Nitin Agarwal. In which country did India propose to establish a warehousing facility named Bharat Mart, expected to be operational by 2025? The United Arab Emirates, because it's the UAE is usually considered an entrepot trade, spelt entrepot, E N T R E P O T, E N T R E P O T. That's a you know the spelling, but it's pronounced entrepot, entrepot, which means a go-between port. This kind of a country, this kind of a port, imports to export. So the Pakistanis don't buy sugar directly from India; they buy from the UAE. What happens is the Indians sell to the UAE. From the UAE, it goes to Pakistan. The UAE is make you know the United Arab Emirates makes money. So Singapore, the United Arab Emirates, Hong Kong, these are all entrepot ports. Uh, there's nothing much to discuss here. The Karnikana Mandapam of the 600-year-old Konnamangalam Tem Bhagavati Temple has been selected for the UNESCO 2023 Asia Pacific Award for Cultural Heritage Conservation. This temple is in uh, Kerala. It's in Kerala. Not much to discuss here. Which of the following places were listed in the award of uh, merit category? All three of them. So again, not much to discuss here because by themselves these are easy, you know, self-explanatory. Which sub schemes were launched by the MSME Ministry? Ministry of what is MSME? Micro, small, and medium enterprises. Micro, small, and medium enterprises under the raising and accelerating MSME productivity ramp program. So all of them. Okay. So again, not much to discuss here. 
maybe we could bring in msme the investment how are they defined in the next class first question i'll bring this back in in partnership with which ministry did the international organization for migration launch a project named prayas to help indian workers and students migrate in a secure orderly and regular manner there are indians everywhere but of late um, migration has picked up in you know in, uh, illegal migration has picked up steam recently you must have heard of this particular plane that was um, uh, grounded by the french authorities yeah because the plane was carrying it is believed that about 400 people as part of a human trafficking network and everything so let's not get there uh, the minister of external affairs headed by subramanyam jay shankar or s jay shankar s jay shankar s jay shankar minister of commerce and industry piyush goel piyush goel he also heads other ministries let's not discuss them ministry of commerce and industry piyush goel ministry of home affairs and ministry of cooperation are both headed by amit shah amit shah ministry of corporate affairs same as the minister of finance um nirmala sitaraman nirmala sitaraman 2024 is the international year of camelids which include bactrian camels all five of them look these are bactrian camels they are double humped they are usually found in central asia you see this here this is called a hump so these kinds of camels are not found in india okay so double humped are bactrian camels these are llamas they are found in large parts of the world especially in south america this is a alpaca okay this is the usual camel we find here in india it's called dromedary it has a single hump okay and this is uh, the gua guanaco it's difficult to spell difficult to read also guanaco it's usually found in south america and the america section okay so this year is the international year of millets next year is going to be the international year of camelids and these guys play a great role in conservation in um, transportation both of humans uh, by people as well as property yeah goods and everything that's all from me bharat si jain have a lot of fun stay curious thank you for being here